Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class, Data Science, Deep Learning in Python, Part 1. In this lecture, we are going to continue our discussion on how to train a neural network. Previously, we did a somewhat long digression on how to train logistic regression with softmax, but you'll see how that will become very useful in this lecture. To start, let's review what the central objects we have to consider are. First, we have our inputs x, which are of shape n by d. We then pass these through the first layer of our neural network, which gives us the hidden layer values z. This has the shape n by m. Finally, we pass z through the output layer of our neural network, and that gives us y. y has the shape n by k. Next, let's consider our neural network weights. In the following lectures, we're going to use W and B for the input to hidden layer, and we're going to use V and C for the hidden to output layer. So W is a matrix of size D by M, while B is a vector of size M. V is a matrix of size M by K, while C is a vector of size K. By the way, in the previous lecture, we didn't use explicit bias terms, but in the following lectures, we will. It makes things a little bit more complicated, but it's necessary. Next, we can write down all the relevant equations for our neural network. And remember, our strategy is still the same as before. We want to build up our objective function, which is the log likelihood or the negative log likelihood. Then we want to find the gradient with respect to each parameter so that we can perform gradient ascent or gradient descent gradient ascent to maximize, and gradient descent to minimize. So first, let's consider how we calculate z. z is just sigma of w transpose x plus b. Now, keep in mind, we have multiple choices for sigma, such as the sigmoid, the tan h, or the rel u. But for the purpose of the following lectures, we'll mostly assume that we're using the sigmoid. y is just the softmax of v transpose z plus c. Note that I've dropped any subscripts from x, y, and z for clarity, but you can assume that they all have two indices, one for the sample index and one for the feature dimension. Luckily, the objective we had doesn't change. We're still doing multi-class classification, so our loss is the categorical cross-entropy. We'll use the positive form of this, so it's the log likelihood, because again, if we don't, we'll just end up having to carry the negative sign over to every line, which can get tedious. Okay, so let's get right to it. We know the steps. Using the chain rule, we can find out which derivatives we have to solve for, and then multiply them all together. So let's start with v and c. Luckily, because we already did this for logistic regression, it's very easy to just copy what we had before. Remember that this is because we have composite functions. j is a function of y, y is a function of a, and a is a function of v and c. At this point, we're not going to look at the input to hidden weights, since they're a little more complicated, so you'll have to wait until the next lecture for that. In this lecture, we're going to continue to solve for the derivative of v and c. You'll notice that these equations take the exact same form as the equations for logistic regression with softmax. In fact, the first two equations are not just the same form, they are exactly the same. Therefore, their derivatives are also the same. Luckily, for the third part, which is just a linear transformation, is easy to derive. The derivative of a n k with respect to v m k is z n m, which mirrors what we had before with logistic regression. And the derivative of a n k with respect to c k is just 1. Putting this all together, and using the results we found earlier, it's easy to see that these are the following derivatives for vmk and ck. As usual, we would like to vectorize these operations so that they are more efficient in code. Just like before, the gradient of j with respect to v is z transpose times t minus y. Unfortunately, there isn't really a convenient notation 
for the sum over one index of a matrix, which is what we have for the bias term C. So we'll just show what it would look like in NumPy.